Hello and welcome to the St. Francis Preparatory School Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements tonight before we get started hearing from six great schools. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including the name of the school in with your question, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to weigh in on about their institution. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's another reason why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening for St. Francis students. We hope that you are signed up for the sessions that are following this one, and you can still do so if you haven't signed up yet. This presentation is also being recorded, as are all of the presentations, and they're going to be at that same website where you register in about a week. So tonight, to make sure you sign up for more sessions and in a week to check out all the recordings, you will head to strivecan.com slash SFP. I'm excited to welcome our first school today, and we are going to be hearing from Boston University. All right, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sam Richard. I'm an assistant director on the Board of Admissions at Boston University. I'm just gonna pull up my screen here and we will get started. Uh, so to start us off, I'll give sort of an overview of BU at a glance. My one sentence overview of Boston University is that we are a large urban global teaching and research university in the heart of Boston. So I'll try to break down each one of those chunks for you a little bit more. Certainly a large institution in terms of the number of students. We've got about 16,000 undergraduate students, uh, roughly the same number of graduate students as well, but also large in terms of the number of programs. We've got about 300 different programs of study, about 450 student run clubs and organizations, 80 study abroad options. So large in lots of respects and a lot that our students can take advantage of that comes from the large scale of the university. Also really urban as well. We are located right within Boston and I'll show some pictures in just a moment to kind of situate our location, but lots of opportunities that come from that as well, whether that's internship or research opportunities, part-time jobs in the city, or just getting out and exploring Boston, going to Fenway Park, uh, visiting restaurants, museums, things like that. Also a really global institution, about 25% of our students come from outside of the US and there are also lots of opportunities to study abroad. I mentioned about 80 different options of places to go. Uh, so lots of ways to gain a global perspective at BU as well. But really at the core, Boston University is a teaching and research university. And so our professors are focused both on undergraduate teaching, building connections with their students, but also on research across just about every discipline you can think of. We're the fourth largest private research university in the US. So lots of research activity and students have a chance to get involved with that as well. Moving on to academics, I mentioned we have just over 300 different programs of study. You can find a full list on our website, but those are organized across our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges. I like to say that if you know what you want to study, it's likely that BU has a strong program for it, but also if you're not quite sure yet, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, and lots of folks will ask me, BU is a really large school, our class size is really large, will I be just a, a number? Fortunately, no. Um, we have an average class size of only about 27 students. And while some classes are a bit larger than that, they'll break down into discussion sections with only about 10 to 15 students. So always a chance to get to know both the other students in your classes, as well as build a connection with your professor in the classroom and through time like office hours that they set aside to meet with students and a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So it really speaks to that ability to get to know your professors. And lots of flexibility in academics as well. It's pretty easy to change majors, even across different schools and colleges, but up until the end of your sophomore year to decide on a final major. And we have an innovative general education program called the BU Hub that allows a lot of flexibility in choosing particular courses that interest you while still fulfilling university requirements overall at the same time. We're also really big on experiential learning. So there are a lot of different ways to learn in addition to what you're doing in the classroom. One great way to do that is through study abroad. We have one of the oldest and best study abroad programs in the country, over 80 specific offerings. So there's one so that every major can study abroad at least once and still graduate on time. Uh, over 20 cities around the globe that you could travel to either through an immersion program where you might be living with a host family somewhere or staying at a university in a different country somewhere else. Lots of different ways to study abroad there. And they have a great website, bu.edu slash abroad. You can explore all the different destinations. Also have a great center for career development, which offers a lot of help for internship and job searches. About 90% of our students will complete at least one internship before they graduate. 
and our undergraduate research opportunities program as well, which has about a million dollars in funding just for undergraduate students to conduct research projects, either in collaboration with a faculty member, or uh, you could propose your own research project and apply for funding for that as well, even beginning with your freshman year. So lots of ways to involve research, um, even starting right away. And I think it's all of these different components helping to build out our students' resumes and really prepare them both in and outside of the classroom that make them really successful post-graduation as well. For our class of 2019, about 94% of them uh, were either employed or in graduate school within six months after graduation. Also have to talk about community as well, because there's lots going on outside of the classes and more learning oriented aspects of the BU experience. Uh, we have over 450 different student run clubs organizations ranging from probably just about anything you could think of, whether it's academic oriented sports, we have varsity club and intramural options for about 30 different sports, lots of cultural organizations, community service, there's a beekeeping club, a cheese lovers society, uh, lots of different options for your free time. Then in addition to that, you also have the city of Boston on top of it, which I'll talk more about in just a second. But you really get the feeling that you are both uh, living in the city, uh, but also have a community feel. We have a really residential campus, even though we are in the city, we guarantee four years of housing and about 75% of students live on campus for all four years. So you definitely feel like you're part of the BU community when you are on campus. But you also have Boston right in your backyard as well, one of America's best college towns and uh, definitely a college feel to the city of Boston, so much to explore. Um, and what's really nice about our campus in particular, which you can see the main road that's running down this picture is Commonwealth Avenue, which is sort of our main artery of campus more or less. Um, and there's seven different subway stops right along that street. So it's really easy to hop on there, head downtown or go anywhere else in the city of Boston that you'd like to. Um, lots of museums uh, nearby will offer discounted um, admission for students or free admission as well. Um, and Fenway Park is right nearby where the Red Sox play. Probably don't have many Red Sox fans joining us today, but you can get discounted tickets uh, to go there. So lots to do in the immediate area in addition to what's already happening on campus. Some highlights for our admissions process, you can see the class profile on the right hand side there. Uh, we do have either early decision or regular decision and accept either the common application or coalition application. And we will be test optional for the SAT and ACT through at least spring 2023. So for juniors applying this uh, next year, uh, we will be test optional for you folks. And some um, sort of next steps for learning a little bit more about BU. I always recommend following us on social media. Our Instagram is a great resource right now. They've got lots of takeovers from different clubs you can check out. Uh, lots of virtual events on our website as well. And my email's right there. And I'll post that in the chat in just a moment. Uh, but thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sam, for starting us off and presenting on Boston University tonight. All right, we're off to our next school. Up next, up next, we're going to be hearing from St. Anselm uh, College, St. Anselm College. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Matt Raymond. I am one of the admission counselors here at St. Anselm. I am also an alumni of the college. I graduated just last May in 2020, so I'm happy to share some of my experience with you and uh, teach you a little bit more about St. Ace. Hopefully everyone can see this, um, but I also too have a short presentation I will go through. Yes, looks great now. So um, St. Anselm College was founded back in 1889 by a group of Benedictine monks that moved up from Newark, New Jersey to Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, uh, we are the third oldest Catholic college in New England. And to this day, we still have a fully functioning Benedictine monastery on our campus. Our monks are fantastic members of our community. Many of them teach courses uh, or work in our offices and they pass down the values that you see on screen to the rest of our community. We are on the smaller side of uh, institutions here in New England. We have a student enrollment of just over 2000. We have students that come from 33 states and nine countries and we are largely a residential campus. Upwards of 90% of our students will live on campus for all four years. We offer a great residential experience. We have dorms that range from traditional double style to apartment living on campus. Our apartments are awesome. They are double floor. Um, you have a kitchen, uh, living room on the main floor and bedrooms and bathroom upstairs. So our students do uh, really enjoy living on campus. Here's some information about our location. Like I mentioned, we're just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire, which is actually the largest city in the state of New Hampshire. We have a small campus feel set atop a hill outside of downtown, but just a few minutes away, um, there are so many fantastic restaurants, business opportunities, internship opportunities, uh, and service opportunities in the greater Manchester community. 
We are an hour away from Boston, an hour away from the beach and the ocean, and an hour away from many of the popular hiking and skiing locations in New Hampshire. Um, so those are all opportunities for a fun day trip with friends. Here is some academic information to share. We are a liberal arts institution, and what that means is you'll take courses in a variety of subject areas. We do have a core curriculum in which students are required to take uh, at least one semester in a number of fields so that you end up having a well-rounded education at, at the end of your time at St. A's. We have an average class size of 18 and a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. Um, my smallest class personally during my time as a student was only four students. So certainly small feel, um, get to know the professors and they teach at a small college like St. A's because they love to work with students on a one-to-one -one level and really get to know you. The Conversatio program is something you may never have heard before. Um, but what it is, is our first year humanities program. Uh, and it's a course that every freshman will take throughout their first year on campus. It's a course um, where we have professors from a variety of disciplines teach this course. So it's great um, to, you know, get introduced to the St. Anselm education uh, throughout this course in your first year. Here on screen is the full list of majors, minors, and pre-professional programs that we offer. I won't leave the list on screen too long because it can be somewhat exhausting to look at, um, but I will tell you that some of our major um, most um, you know, well-attended programs are biology, chemistry, business, nursing, politics, uh, criminal justice, among others. If it's on this list, it's here because we're confident we can provide a strong program in that field. Here are some of the ways that our students get involved. Service is a big aspect of the St. Anselm experience. We have over 50 organizations that we partner with in the community um, and our students have service opportunities both on campus uh, and off campus with the Melia Center who is our uh, service office on campus. We do also offer internships. Our nursing students and education majors will complete internships as part of their curriculum. Um, but additionally, our career development center will work with a student who's interested in pursuing an internship in another field. We do offer study abroad. Our main program is an in-house program that travels to Orvieto, Italy. Uh, we send St. A's students over to Orvieto with St. A's professors. So that's a great opportunity. Um, but if Orvieto isn't the place for you, we also have a study abroad office that works with students to build a program in other countries. Here are some other ways that our students get involved. We have over 50 uh, clubs and organizations on campus in a variety of um, you know, subject areas and interests. Uh, if there's something you're interested in in high school, it's in all likelihood we offer a similar experience here at St. A's. We also have the New, New Hampshire Institute of Politics on our campus, which is a great resource for students interested in politics. They have some fantastic events, including um, presidential primary debates uh, that occur every four years. So presidential candidates come to our campus. Uh, news networks will set up shop there for a few weeks. And it's always a busy time on campus, uh, you know, around that time of year. We also have three different levels of athletics on our campus that range from our varsity division two teams uh, to our club sports, which are mostly student run, also competitive, travel to other institutions and play games and are a lot of fun. Uh, and as well, we have intramurals that are also uh, some really fun ways to spend an hour playing volleyball on a random Wednesday night uh, or anything along that line with your friends. Here are some ways that our students move on after graduation. Happy to announce that 99% of our class of 2019 was either fully employed, uh, pursuing an advanced degree or enrolled in service or the military uh, within six months of graduating. So you see some of the fantastic universities that we move, we, move, we move students onto after graduation, as well as some workplaces. Our Career Development Center is a fantastic resource for students on campus. They have an online resource called Handshake, which is a job posting site um, and our, you know, the folks in that office are experts in their field at, at placing students on a pathway to success. We also have uh, some application and admission information here on screen. We offer early decision, early action, and regular decision applications. Um, as you see, the deadlines are there on screen, as well as some of our ranges and averages for um, test scores, GPAs. And that is all the information that I have prepared for you. So I will also um, add my email to the chat below. Be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. And thank you for, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much, Matt, for presenting on St. Anselm College. All right, we've heard from two great schools. We've got four more to go. I wanna remind all of our attendees, especially some newcomers, uh, welcome. 
please uh, think about asking questions with that Q&A button. You can enter a question in there about anything related to admissions or academics or the honor class experience at any of these schools. You can direct it to a specific school by including their name, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their programs. And these admissions professionals would love to hear from you and to find out a little bit more specifically about what you might wanna know about their institution. All right, well, we are off to our next school. It's going to be Simmons University. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Denise West Rosales, and I am one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admission at Simmons University. Um, so I'm going to get started um, and talk, tell you a little bit about Simmons University. So the first thing I always like to talk about um, is we're located in Boston, Massachusetts. So very, one of our neighbors is actually uh, Boston University. Um, we're a fairly small school. We have about 1800 undergraduate students, um, 60 plus majors and programs, and then 70 plus um, uh, organizations on campus. So um, we also are a women's center institution. So uh, we do accept applicants who identify as women, but also those who identify as um, transgender or non-binary. So that's something that's really important to us. And we wanna make sure that is um, very clear to our students. Sorry, going next slide. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of where we're located on campus, um, this is kind of um, just a quick little map of where we're located in Boston, excuse me. Um, so just to get you an idea of where in Boston. So we are uh, directly in the Fenway area. We're literally uh, down the street from Fenway Park. So um, right, like a five minute walk, it's very close. Uh, we're also right next door to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, um, the Museum of Fine Arts um, and the Longwood Medical Area. Um, and everything on this map is actually accessible through our public transit system. Um, so anything on here, even if it was the airport, you can actually um, take the train or bus to from Simmons University. It's a very, um, very easy ride. It's, um, and something that's really awesome that our professors do is one of the first um, classes that students take or year, the professors actually um, take the students on uh, our public transit system so that they can get familiar with it. And it's kind of like a field trip, but um, they'll take our students to some place on this map. Sometimes it'll be Faneuil Hall, sometimes it'll be the Museum of Science. Um, and so they want students to, who are not from the area to get familiar with the system and how it works, but also to show you how, how to get to places in the area. So that's something that's really important for our professors um, to do. And this is a list of our majors and uh, majors and minors. I won't uh, go through each of these because there's a lot. Um, but something I will mention is we do have a few direct entry programs. These are programs that um, you would need to apply to and indicate on your application in order to get admission for the programs. And those include nursing, physical therapy, and then our accelerated programs, which is on the right of this screen. Um, if you have questions about um, any of these programs, feel free to reach out um, in the chat and I'm happy to answer these questions on any of these programs and such. And 100% of our students actually um, participate in real world learning. So uh, that means students, all of our students in every single program are doing some sort of internship, a research, uh, clinicals, um, independent studies. And the whole point of this is we want our students to feel prepared um, once they leave Simmons. And we want them to also start building their resume early on. Um, some of our students start start doing internships and uh, research right in their first year. And that's something that we encourage our students to do, but we also um, are trying to set them up for success and want them to really utilize the tools that they're, um, that they're learning in the classroom outside of Simmons and um, also get a feel of, of, of their field and what they're interested in. Uh, that's really important to us. Um, I did mention that we are a women's center institution. So that's something that uh, we get a lot of questions about and that's totally fine. Um, but something on this slide is really thinking about the importance of that and why it's significant. And so there's some statistics on this slide that really show um, that, our, that our students are succeeding and also becoming leaders in their field. So um, 
not only do we want our students to be leaders, but we also want them to understand that there are barriers in place for students um, with marginalized identities um, to be in leadership positions in, if not some, all of these majors that we do offer, because most of them are male dominated fields. And so we talk about that and, into, and our professors integrate that in their classroom to talk about how our students can feel empowered and be successful um, in their field of study. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention, um, this is like our little plug that has some of our um, social media information, but also thinking about um, all the other things we also do. So a lot of our students are very involved in and off campus. So um, we do have students that are doing, um, that are nursing students, but also are also athletes. They're doing intramural sports. They're interning at the state house. They're doing so many things and our students, um, and our students, um, encourage each other to do that, but our professors as well. Our professors are really pushing our students to think about um, what they want to do outside of Simmons, but also how they can carry on, um, how they can create their own legacy and um, build their own future. And sometimes that's a lot of students just thinking about, um, they have many different interests, and so they want to find a way to combine that. So for example, we had a student who studied physical therapy, but was also interested in gymnastics and wanted to find a way to in, integrate that into her interests. And so she was actually able to um, create a group and um, start a club and also practice for athletes, do some physical therapy for athletes. But I'm going to um, add my email in the chat. And if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But thank you so much for um, hearing me talk and such. Thank you so much for presenting on Simmons University tonight for us. All right, we're moving on to school number four. We're going to be hearing from St. John's University. Hi, everybody. Just give me a second here. I'm going to get us started by sharing my screen. You can see that okay? Okay, perfect. So my name is Jill and I am an admission counselor for St. John's University. I also am an alumni, so I graduated from St. John's myself um, a few years back. So today I'm just gonna go over some of the opportunities that St. John's students have and just go a little bit over um, what our university might have to offer you in the coming years. So this slide up here is really just, I like to say a snapshot of what our university looks like or what we have for our students. We are one of the number one Catholic institutions in the country. We have over seven, we have seven campuses. Um, we have one located here in Queens, New York, Staten Island, Manhattan. We also have campuses in Rome, Paris, and Limerick, Ireland. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one, although we are considered a medium large to large size institution with about 17,000 students. Um, we are also a very diverse university, so we have um, students who come from over 100 countries and over 45 different states um, here in the United States. So it's a great opportunity for our students to really get both a global um, and local education um, here on our Queens campus. So our main campus is our Queens camp campus located here in Queens, New York. Um, for my St. Francis Prep kids, you've probably seen it at some point, um, whether it's been driving by or you've had an older sibling who's come to St. John's. Um, what's really nice, though, is that we are a traditional style campus. So we are a gated community. Um, we do have the typical trees, grass, pretty buildings, typical to what you might see on a college campus. But we also have the opportunity of um, New York City right in our backyard. So I like to say that our students really get the best of both worlds. We do have a campus in Staten Island as well. It's a significantly smaller campus of about 2,000 students, but still a great opportunity for our students to get a St. John's education. Our, built, our business school is in Manhattan, so some students are able to um, take classes down in Manhattan, usually during their senior or uh, junior or senior year. And then we also have campuses in Rome, Paris, and Limerick Island, which we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about studying abroad. As for choosing a major at St. John's, we have over 100 different programs for our students to choose from. Up on the screen, you'll see all of them. I'm not going to go through that list. But some of our top programs is our six-year pharmacy program. It is direct entry. Some of our other popular programs are psychology, accounting, business, actuarial science, um, speech pathology. Again, there is an overview. Most of our students who come in as freshmen are undecided majors. So if you're not sure what you wanna do, do not worry about that. 
And I always just like to mention that St. John's does offer dual degree options, which is a great opportunity for our students to study for both a bachelor's and a master's degree in five years time. It'll save them some time, some money and some stress. So you'll be graduating in five years from St. John's with two degrees. I always just like to mention living on campus, although some of my students here are local, so you would most likely be commuting. I always do just like to say that we do have the option for students to live on campus. If you are looking to have that full college experience, we offer both traditional and suite style housing. Um, all of our campus housing is very modern um, and up to date. So we have no communal bathrooms at St. John's. We only have doubles, singles and triples. Um, and our students are really able to feel um, comfortable and accommodated while living away from home. And as I mentioned, we are a global institution. So we do have campuses in Paris, Rome and Limerick, Ireland. At St. John's, we really don't say, um, you know, is a student gonna study abroad? It's more of a question of when. So our students have the opportunity to study abroad as early as their freshman year. You'll be able to take classes in our, on our Queens campus and then at the end of the semester go for a short time for seven to 10 days with your class and professor um, to one of these countries. Our most popular program is called Discover the World. This allows our students to spend five weeks in Paris, five weeks in Rome, and then five weeks in Limerick, Ireland. Um, but we do have a full study abroad center on campus. So if there is a country you've been interested in studying in, I definitely suggest meeting up with them. What's also really great is that your scholarship and um, financial aid does go over with you. So it makes studying abroad and having this global education um, really affordable for our students. We are a division one school. We play for the Big East Conference. I, I always just like to mention that we have 17 division one sports. Our largest one is men's basketball. We'll play half of our games on our Queens campus and half of them at Madison Square Garden. We also do offer club and intramural level sports. So if you not, are not on the division one level, you could still play competitively in college. And then I always say find your niche at St. John's. We have over 180 student organizations. So there's really something for everybody to get involved with. Um, I always say continue doing something that you're doing in high school or maybe pick up something that you weren't able to do in high school that you're interested in pursuing in college. Um, and again, it's really just a great opportunity for you to get to know other St. John's students um, in the area. And as for job and internship opportunities, here are a couple of different country companies that our students have worked or interned with. Like I mentioned earlier, we are only 40 minutes outside of Midtown Manhattan. So our students really are marketable to companies being able to work and intern during their fall and spring semesters as well. Um, we also have a full career services center. You will be set up with a career advisor who will help you find different jobs and internship opportunities. We also do have over a 94% placement rate after graduation, which allows our students to know that after graduating from St. John's, they'll either be in um, a graduate program or a job of their choice. And just quickly going over the application information, we offer early decision, early action, and rolling admission. Um, we are a test optional school as well, so you do have the opportunity to submit without test scores. The average student has about a 90 GPA and about a 1200 SAT. And then I always just like to end off here with um, my contact information. If you do have any questions, please feel free to email me. And we are offering also on-campus tours as well. So feel free to come visit us sometime this summer. Great, thank you so much for presenting on St. John's University for us this evening. All right, four schools down, two to go. Um, I wanna just remind and let all of our attendees know, definitely check the chat to be sure to grab that contact information for the representatives so you can follow up after. Remember six minutes is just a sneak peek. And um, I love seeing that we're starting to get some questions into the Q&A. So please drop any questions you have in there about um, the schools because we wanna help get those answered for you tonight. All right, but as you can see by who's joining on screen, we're going to be hearing from Cabrini University next. Hello, good afternoon. How's everyone doing? My name is Gabby Manji. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Cabrini University. Thank you so much for hanging around. I know you have been presented with amazing opportunities. So I just wanted to go ahead and start with my presentation about Cabrini University in Pennsylvania. So Cabrini University, we are named after Mother Frances Xavier Cabrini. Some of you guys may have heard from her um, from your family or if you follow the Catholic tradition, she's actually the patron saint of immigrants. So Cabrini University was founded by the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart, which is the um, convent of nuns that Mother Cabrini 
um, founded, so to say. She was a pioneer in coming from Italy to the United States and being able to found different um, organizations to help immigrants arriving um, who were going through dire situations. And today her legacy lives on at Cabrini University. What this means, it, it's not necessarily that our students are can only be Catholic, um, although we do identify with a Catholic identity. It means though that we follow a tradition of social justice um, service and making sure that everything that we do as a Cabrini community is with the betterment of our communities in mind. So as we move forward, um, we'll talk a little bit more about what it means. Um, our motto is an education of the heart. So I hope that I'm able to com convey really what that means in our Cabrini community. So as I mentioned, what is the Cabrini difference? You guys probably have so many different options going on for colleges for yourselves. So Cabrini, why should you consider it? What we do at Cabrini is we wanna make sure that we educate students holistically. This means that we wanna make sure you guys are educated not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. You guys are cognizant of yourselves and your abilities to be able to provide service to others. So whether you study mathematics, biology, um, computer science, you will do this in a way that allows you to think of how will your talents improve your community. So as soon as you come into Cabrini University, we want to establish um, your network. We do so with a living and learning community program, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more um, in a couple of slides. But you will come into Cabrini, possibly not knowing anyone, and as soon as you come in, you will pick a topic um, of choice, whether it be um, writing or education, and you'll be able to live in the same wing of, a of um, an apartment or a dorm with other students who are also interested in this topic. Um, this is an award-winning program. And another thing that th these communities do is do social service, um, community programs with different organizations that we have either at Cabrini or outside. Um, and as you can see, this is our one of our sports teams. I believe this is women's lacrosse. Um, they are doing community service. They're making lunch bags for people experiencing homelessness in the Philadelphia area. And this is one of the reasons why Cabrini has been named one of the most transformative colleges. Um, this was by Money Magazine in the year 2019, and it's definitely still relevant to this day. Um, as I mentioned, everything that we do is to educate you guys holistically. So talking a little bit about academics, we offer over 40 majors and minors. Um, we do have them online with, along with more details and information about them. Our newest majors are nursing, music industry, and biochemistry. Um, nursing has been a really popular program. We are, we are, we're a pretty small school. And nursing, just like every other major, is done with a focus on um, health equity. So you guys will be learning how to treat students, how to treat patients, whether they have insurance, no insurance, whether they're from an underprivileged background, et cetera. Um, our student to professor ratio is 16 to one, which allows you guys to start talking to your professors from your freshman year, getting to know them. Um, they're the people who are gonna help you with making connections inside the classrooms and outside the classrooms when it's time to graduate, do your research um, for your capstone, et cetera. So a small tight knit community is what we like to offer our students. Um, 19 different concentrations and affiliated pre-professional programs, which means these are affiliate programs with other universities in the area so that you guys can do accelerated programs such as dentistry right after Cabrini, um, podiatric medicine, et cetera. As I mentioned, these are all located at cabrini.edu. I welcome you to check these out um, and ask any one of us in the admissions office um, if you need any more details. So the university is split in four different schools, it is the School of Business, Arts and Media, the School of Education, the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, and the School of Natural Sciences and Allied Health. Some of our most popular uh, majors are education. We were actually founded as an education school um, in 1957. 
And one of the reasons why this remains one of our most popular majors is because we're able to place students in their observation sites in their sophomore years instead of their junior years. Life on campus, a little bit of our campus, and I will just leave you guys with my contact information. This is our social media. Feel free to contact me with any questions that you have. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gabby, for sharing Cabrini University with all of us today. All right, we're off to our six schools. The next place we're going is Lynn University. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I know you've gotten a lot of great information from a lot of wonderful universities, so just bear with me for a little bit. I'll be quick and painless for you. Um, just a little bit about me while I get this started. Um, give me one second, let me just get this. Alrighty. So again, my name is Justin Lubor. I'm the senior assistant yeah. director of. I actually oh. have one quick question for you. We can definitely see yeah, your screen, up? but your video screen has gone. So I wanted to check uh -oh. out if you were aware um, of that. I am not, but it's okay. Um, you know, to see my ugly face. So do you want to? I mean, do you want to? Um, do you want to just unshare and reshare and just see if we can reset it real quick? Yeah. Um, I can do that really quick. Oops, sorry. I'm so sorry about this, everyone. I think, you would think we know what we're doing. administrators, we're parents, we've all been there. <laughs> Don't worry. All righty. And if it doesn't work, then I'll, you know, we'll let it go this time, but I just wanted to at least give it a shot. Perfect. All righty. Is it working, y'all? No, this, your screen okay. is black. So I guess we can just go with the shared screen. We can hear you just fine. Okay. All right. So I'm so sorry about that. Um, but anyways, like I was saying before, oh, my name is Justin Loop. Could you reshare yep. your screen? We're not seeing your screen yet. Oh my gosh, it's one of those days. Until, <laughs> it's one of those yeah. days. <laughs> I don't want to disappear oh, until we are perfect. Awesome. All righty. Everything yeah. all set now? Yeah, all set now. Awesome. All righty, cool. So I will make this really quick because I know I just took up a few minutes of everybody's time. Um, but like I said, my name is sure. Justin Lubor, the sen Senior Assistant Director of Admission here at Lynn University. I've been here for a little over five years. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, we are located in Bo beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. Um, all that means that you really need to know is that we're about five minutes from the beach or about three miles to the beach. Um, we're kind of sandwiched right between West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale or about an hour north of Miami. So you have three major airports that you can fly into. Um, we're also ranked one of the most international students, um, you know, because we are actually have over 100 different countries represented here on campus. So we really truly are a global community here. Um, so like I was saying, 97 nations are represented, 47 states and territories. Um, New York is actually our largest out-of-state population. Um, more specifically Long Island and then Westchester and then the city. Um, so for us, we're about 25% of our students are from the state of Florida and 25% international students. So the 50% come from the 49 other, uh, 47 other states. Um, but again, you know, like you, I was mentioning before, New York is our largest one. Um, we're a little bit smaller university, about 2,700 students. Um, but what that means to you mainly is that we have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio here on campus. Now, what separates our university from the 4,000 other universities that are out there, um, something that I really am passionate about is our iPad learning. Now, when students come to campus, they're actually handed an iPad Pro, and all your books are going to be, all your books are going to be preloaded with 20, you're going to have the, um, the books preloaded onto it, plus on top of that, 20 different apps um, to enhance your learning. So everything from Notability um, to all the Microsoft products that you're going to need. Um, so what that means to you is that it has a 97% cost savings here on campus. Um, so again, because again, all the books are going to be preloaded onto you. And the best part is, is all the professors, they're the ones that are the ones that are making the books for you as well. So you know that you're not going to, you know, get a textbook that has 400 pages and maybe use two pages of it. For us, like I said, you're going to be using everything right there on the iPad as well. Now, on the right hand side, you'll see that we have about 45 different majors to choose from. College of Business is probably our most popular um, in everything from our sports management, because we have every major league sports team all around us, uh, to our entrepreneurship majors, because we actually have, um, you know, about, I want to say about seven different uh, Fortune 500 companies just in Boca and the South Florida area alone. Um, so you're going to be getting internships and job opportunities with them. Um, but if you want to work for the FBI, if you want to do pre-med, we have all that as well, too. 
Now, we also have a three-year accelerated program that saves you about $50,000. Now, what that is, is Lynn University is going to be paying for you to take that one extra class every single semester, and you'll be able to graduate in three years instead of the traditional four with, again, saving you $50,000. And you can actually do a one-year master's program as well. Um, so you can literally be in and out in four years with a bachelor's and master's degree, um, saving a total of almost $75,000, just $50,000 with the three-year accelerated program. And then again, a little bit more with the master's program. Um, but again, all it is is just adding one extra class every single semester. Now, speaking of jobs and internships, uh, we are very well known um, in the industry with getting students jobs and internships. Uh, last year, for instance, 86% of our students had a job or internship within three months of graduation. Um, you can see some of them right here, um, like I was mentioning before with sports management. Um, we have a lot of great opportunities with Miami Heat, uh, working for the Houston Astros. If you want to work for uh, my personal favorite, which is Disney, I'm a huge Disney nerd. So being about two and a half hours away from Disney is a big plus for us um, and for me personally. Uh, we also, you know, if you want to go into aviation, we have everything from JetBlue and United. Um, and then, of course, with communication with CNN um, and things like that. Uh, just some quick little uh, decision deadlines, um, April, November 15th, and then um, is our early action deadline. So what I mean by that is just as long as you apply before November 15th and you get me all of your documents, you're guaranteed a decision before the holidays. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to come. It just means that you've been accepted and it's a huge weight lifted off your shoulder your senior year. You can relax. Um, and then, of course, you do have until May 1st. Now, me personally, I am the one that does review your application, so definitely get in contact with me. Um, I'll be, like I said, the one, you know, the point person for you. Um, I actually work with all the different students from New York. Um, here's my contact information right here, um, and I will also put that in the chat for you as well. And thank you guys so much for coming and look forward to hopefully seeing you on campus soon. Great, thank you so much, Justin, for presenting on Lynn tonight. All right, well, we have reached the end of our formal six by six. We still have a couple minutes together. And um, so I have a live Q&A question and I wanna give um, our representatives a last chance to make sure any of the information they want in the chat for attendees to grab that. So if everyone could come back online to, uh, on camera together, that would be awesome. Um, so I know it'll be, a little brief and you have so many options on each of your campuses to choose from that it is hard to choose. But I would love to hear from each of you about a favorite event, campus tradition or program um, that's really important to your students and your community. We'll go in the exact same order that you presented. So we'll start with Sam from Boston and then we will just go through one through six. When the representative ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer away. So thanks Sam for kicking us off again. All right, sure. So I think my favorite event that happens every year at Boston University in the fall is Lobster Night, which takes place in the dining halls. Uh, so BU actually ends up purchasing about 8,000 lobsters to have enough for just about every student to have one if they'd like. And there's lobsters in every single dining hall. There's a line around the block of students waiting to get in. Uh, really exciting event and a great chance to try some uh, New England delicacies. That sounds like a blast. Um, at St. A's, what I like to say is unofficially, but according to me, um, we are the number one college in the country for Christmas cheer, um, starting all the way uh, in November before Thanksgiving, which is uh, controversial. Uh, there's just something in the air on campus. We have a gingerbread house contest that uh, students will camp out at 2 a.m. Uh, in order to register for the next day. Um, as well, we have a Christmas feast every year in our dining hall where you go get dressed up with your friends, enjoy a fantastic meal put on by our dining services. Um, so two fantastic events. And like I said, around that time of year, there's just something in the air. That was awesome. Amazing. Um, I would say at Simmons University, um, usually in the beginning of the year in September, um, there's a big carnival that takes place uh, to kind of welcome our students back on campus. Um, and it's one of my favorites because as all the first years come, it's like that awkward, like we don't know anybody. And then it's uh, by the end of it, after all the like food and games, um, everyone seems to know each other, they're best friends. Um, it's just great to kind of see that like start to finish. And there's always so many things they give away, they give away like, like betta fish. Um, they have like, it's like a full on carnival with like food and it's, it's awesome. And it's kind of cool to have it like right in the Fenway area where like, there's not really a carnival ever that you see one. Um, so it's definitely, I would say that's my favorite tradition. 
I might have to jump on the Christmas bandwagon with you. Um, since we are a Catholic University, Christmas is a big time at St. John's. So the week before um, students are leaving for the holidays, we do have like a horse and carriage ride. We have they bring in like an ice rink for our students. And then on the last day, we have our Christmas tree lighting with a full fireworks show, which is really awesome for our students and their families. Hey everyone. I believe it's my turn. I hope I'm not cutting anyone. Um, so one of my favorite traditions at Cabrini is the Battle of Eagle Road, which is a basketball game between us. We live, no, we live, we're located in the main line of Pennsylvania where, where there's so many different colleges located. There's, as you can imagine, tons of rivalry. And we have a college that's literally right across the road, right across Eagle Road. So when there's this basketball game, either Cabrini students all like walk in mass to that campus or that campus walks in mass to Cabrini University. And it's a huge thing. Whoever wins the basketball game um, illicitly gets to keep the Eagle Road sign who someone stole at some point. Um, it's really funny to me, but it's especially nostalgic now, of course, in quarantine times. Um, I hope we get to do it again soon. But it's really fun to see all the students, you know, trash talking, of course, um, and just being passionate about their sport and their school. Alrighty, last but not least. Um, so one of my favorites is our Founders Day event that we do. Uh, typically, it used to be um, having canoe races. I'm not sure even how that got started, but we have a lake that's right there in the front. Um, and we actually do this around January and February just because we can and it's South Florida and 80 degree weather while everyone is in the snow. Um, we're hanging out on the lake. Um, but like I said, it's little canoe races all around campus. Um, and then we actually just turn that into go kart So people are dressing up as like Mario Kart and doing all that. And then again, me personally, just because I'm a Disney nerd is um, getting to do our annual Disney trip that we usually do. I'm um, getting on a bus at 6 a.m. Um, get up there by nine o'clock and then, you know, be back in the dorms by midnight. So that's always a fun time and enjoying the South Florida area. I love hearing about all these different events. I want to go and, you know, take a sneak peek on social media and uh, kind of just see that a little bit of that insight. I hope that for all of our students who are attending or watching later, um, if you think, oh, that sounds cool, you know, I could see myself doing that or that definitely, you know, sounds like something that caught your attention. Go check it out, learn more. These six minutes are just a sneak peek. There is so much more for all of you schools to offer in and out of the classroom and for you to get to know. And these admissions representatives are your number one resource. They are here to answer any question to help guide you and your family through the process and connect you with everything else that there is to learn. So thank you to all of our representatives for being here, for sharing not just those facts and figures, but the passion, the excitement you have for your students' opportunities in and out of the classroom. To all of our attendees and those watching again, thanks for taking the time um, to learn more and to hopefully kick off or continue your college search with some new great schools in mind. When you close your window tonight, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. And again, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted for St. Francis Prep students. We hope that you will sign up for more sessions. And remember, in about a week's time, you'll find this session as well as all of the session recordings at the same website where you register, strivescan.com slash SF. All right, well, thank you again, everyone. Best of luck in our college search process. Well, yes, it can seem like there's a lot to you and it's overwhelming. It is a lot of fun and a great adventure to find out what's next for you after high school. Bye.